What's up, party people, and welcome back to another episode of the podcast, Dance Specific Talks. I'm Teresa Allen, aka Teaser, and your host, Truly. This episode is very special as I am interviewing a couple that are doing several different styles. She is from Copenhagen, Denmark, and he is from New York City in the States. They are doing light feet and bone breaking, and I'm super excited to welcome in this episode Emily Brooklyn and X, the bone breaker. Welcome to an interview, Emily Brooklyn and X. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> First of all, congratulations. You're not only expecting a baby, but you just got married. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. It's been so crazy to follow your journey because I literally stumbled on Emily's YouTube a couple of weeks ago and I'm like, oh, it's just happened so much in just such a short amount of time for you guys. How are you feeling? How is your situation right now? amazing honestly yeah Yeah, it's great this whole year has been good for me yeah Um, yeah it's been like (laughs) are you (laughs) i'm good i think we're really happy like uh we are really happy it's like it's been 2020 has been like um i think uh a different changing year for everybody but for us it's actually been like Big a big blessing yeah first it was like i had to i moved back to denmark because of corona so first we didn't see each other for like almost six months which obviously was hard but then x came to denmark yeah in july i came out here yeah for a, a month and a half yeah yeah about two months i was out there and then left i came right back but yeah then i got pregnant before i left she got pregnant so yeah <laughs> yeah so it's been like uh it's been a crazy year but really just nice and amazing and we're so excited about everything that's going on (laughs) it is it is and it's just funny because like i i very recently saw your first youtube video emily and like you had a question a q a and there was one question was said like where do you see yourself in 10 years and you were like yeah i hope i have a family and you know that was like april 2019 and yeah you know, one and a half year later, you're just here, you're creating a family, you're starting a new chapter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. I did say that. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Evil well, genius. <laughs> you know, like you're representing two different styles and I, I want to get into also, you know, like how did you meet and all of that. But let's just, you know, since you're two people, let's just dive into one of you first. Emily, I met you back in 2010 you were very young you were very yeah. very young, um, <laughs> yeah, very young. <laughs> and for me you were a very young hungry hip-hop and whacker that's how mm. i perceive well, and vulgar of course mm. um i know that you mentioned in one of your youtube videos that your family and your household had a great impact on how you viewed maybe art and creativity Tell me a little bit about, you know, like how you grew up and, and what what effects did it have on you and your journey? Well, both of my parents are basically like entrepreneurs. My mom, she owns her own hairdresser and have been owning the same hairdresser for like 35 years or something. So I kind of grew up helping her and like being around that. And then my dad, he's a very, he's like a life coach. That's his job. But he, it, he plays the bass, he plays drums, like he's always been very creative next to his daytime job. And he's always been very, like, he's always been very supportive of our creativity as kids. I have two siblings and all three of us turned out creative. And he's actually been very supportive uh, in all of our creativity. And I feel like he's like a big reason why you know, we dare to go a different way or dare to be different or dare to like just say, okay, this is what I like, this is what I'm gonna do. And um yeah, it's been a it's I have I had a very, very great support system. Both my mom and dad are super, super supportive of what I do and have always, yeah, they let me like skip school to go dancing and stuff like that, you know? 
not that it's great, but they let me do that. That's what I wanted to do at that time. I wanted to dance. I really didn't care about anything else, and they let me do it. And I think that was a big blessing. That's a big reason why, like, I could focus on what I really wanted to. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that was a big blessing. Yeah. And then you you started dancing at the age of four, if I'm right, and yeah. it just continued. And you started battling at the age of thirteen, and that's a where around somewhere where we met. And I remember yeah. battling very very early. Mm. Uh, why do you think that was? Was it because you had like pushy mentors, or were you just had that desire very early to get into hip hop culture? I definitely had pushy mentors, <laughs> but in a great way, like they pushed me to like do better and they pushed me to like all the time. If I had a boundary, they would push me to go over that boundary. Like my first battle was my mentor that told me like, you're doing this battle, I'm signing you up. And I was like, no, I don't want to. And she was like, it was because I had, I think my first battle ever was a whacking and a hip hop battle. And I had only started whacking like three months before. And she was like, I'm signing you up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? No, don't sign me up. But I made it to the semifinals and I just started like three months earlier. So it was like that moment, that first battle actually I ever did was like a very defining moment for me because that's when a lot of people saw me and that's when Ava saw me. And that's why she asked me to join the Workaholics because she saw me in that battle. So that first battle was like, yeah, a defining moment. No, but yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> yeah, but then yeah, I, I don't know. I really and then after, of course, the first battle. Then I got hungry. Then I wanted to battle, and then I wanted to beat everyone, and then I wanted to be the best, and all of that young, hungry mentality. And then um, I did that for like quite a few years, like up until. When was my last battle? I mean, we battled this summer, but I don't really battle like that so much anymore. Like, it, I kind of lost interest in it, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, I don't know. Something happened where I just didn't find it as interesting as I used to. I didn't have the same drive to, like, beat people anymore. It was kind of like, okay, I did this for so many years, for, like, 10 years I've been battling. And like, I really was hungry all the time to beat people. And all the time, like all of a sudden that hungriness kind of died down. It was like, I don't really have a urge to beat people anymore. Like I, I don't have that hungriness for like winning over other people. It just kind of fizzled into, <laughs> yeah. So now I love be doing other stuff with dancing, but battling kind of like the last few years hasn't been like a big priority for me. Yeah, um, we're going to come back to because you, after a couple of years, you actually felt drawn to New York and you went there and we're going to come back to that. But before that, I really want to jump into X because I can imagine that you had like a very different upbringing. And, and I also wondered like what sparked your interest for, for dance? Was it from your family or where, what kind of environment did you grow up in? Um... It, uh, the environment I grew up in, my family, they're uh, we're more like on the athletic side. Like I have um, my brother, my brothers play basketball. My sisters, um, they was cheerleaders actually. Now that I come to think about it, yeah, mm. oh, let me rewind that. Yeah, actually, I started dancing from young. Like we used to have little parties at my house, little birthday parties, and my mother used to bring out a camcorder and just watch us dance and play with play around with each other um and then it went to uh, i just stopped dancing i was just worrying about playing basketball and drawing and stuff and from there it went from there to um going to junior high school i was um it was a boy in my class his name is baron and i saw him in the classroom just but a little, I already, I already knew what that was, Tudden. I already knew what it was, but I didn't see it in that form yet. I was like, okay, that's different. So I used to watch my cousin on a, a show called B Cat. It's something that only comes on in New York City, Flex in Brooklyn, back in the day. So I would see, I always just see my cousin on that, and then I met him, my my friend in class, and he taught me how to do a one-two, and I was like, oh, okay. 
but I still thought it was a little stupid. This is just me. <laughs> I thought it was a little stupid, but then I got used to it. He gave me a DVD. He was like, yeah, try doing it. Look at the DVD. Then I saw my cousin on the DVD doing more. He's doing all of this. He's bone breaking. I'm like, oh, this is fire. <laughs> I got to learn this. And then I wound up learning it. And that's how my dancing sparked. This is funny because um, I, Emily, you maybe can fill me in here, but for, for me, and I think a lot of other Europeans, tutting belongs to popping. And so mm. for us, we see tutting mostly in popping battles because we don't have sub, you know, genres within our popping categories in hip hop battles. And bone breaking mm. is mostly seen in voguing. So um, I, I think it's interesting to, to hear you talk about this because tutting is like basically its own thing where maybe yeah. you come from and more closer to the culture of bone breaking and flexing and like more people are mixing it mm -hmm. what what um you said you saw it like in uh, on your in your cousin's dvd and all of that did you like how how hard was it to take the first step of like joining a training or was it something that just happened or it was hard no it was hard it took me a while like to learn how to um to learn how to bone break it took me seven months just to learn it like just to get that it took me seven months mm -hmm. so from there it was very like my arms are sore it takes a lot of practice um it takes a lot of dedication and focus like you can't just say oh i'm gonna learn this and then think that's it you got to go through a lot of pain <laughs> it actually hurts it's like a lot of people that do know how to bone break they are double joining like they're born like that uh, and uh, and a, a lot of us is not born like that so it's more like a yoga type of mentality you got to get into of just stretching and being focused on just trying to get that stretch on each of limb kind of like <laughs> it's very weird to explain but it, it took a while to get loose like this a very long time yeah because i think that a lot of people think exactly what you're saying that you're born with it like you're born with like over flexible joints and so you're tending to go to this dance style but mm -hmm. um did you ever try other dance styles before or was this just like no this is exactly what i want to do um i tried um i tried uh the little lifey thing she does i tried that before when i was younger but it, it wasn't for me i was like uh, -uh. uh it's not for me <laughs> i mean at the time when it first came out everybody was doing it so yeah. it was a point in time i was doing it for a little while but I was still flexing at the same time. So flexing took me more than light feet did. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And how, how would you define, just because I also really want to know, like, is there like a huge difference from flexing to bone breaking or like, is it just different words for the same um, style or? Bone breaking is a style within flexing. Mm. Gotcha. It's like flexing is basically like, it's just, it's just how I look at it. Everybody looks at it differently. Everybody has their own explanation or how they perceive flexing. But I look at it as you can have any dance genre, any style come to flexing and make it into a format of flex. It's like flexing is just a format on how you do what you're doing. So like you could be a you can be a whacker, come to flexing mm -hmm. and actually do your whacking, mm -hmm. but doing it in a way where it looks like you're flexing. You're bringing it to like an urban type side of it. Like that's how I look at it. Yeah, that's why I didn't understand flexing at first. <laughs> like my first battle fest I went to, I was like, but well, what is flexing? Because everybody dances so different, but they all call themselves flexors so in the beginning I was like I didn't understand the style because it was so I could tell like a lot of people was connecting and some people was bone breaking but then you have people that do pure floor and brook up and then you have people that would do like it's so many different like styles within flexing but it's mostly like yeah it's every, the format. It's every yeah. style to me it's just how yeah. you present it yeah 
And that's, that's funny because, I mean, Emily, to go back to you, when you first came to New York, was light feet one of the things that you noticed on the first trip to New York? So I've been going to, my family owned a house in New York. So I've been going to New York like my whole life since I was young. And I didn't know about flexing on light feet until like five years ago. That's the first time I discovered both of the styles. And honestly, I was way more into flexing at first. I was practicing with flexors before I got introduced to light feet, actually. Um, yeah, like I was taking classes, like flexing classes. I mean, not really, but I was practicing with flexors. <laughs> <laughs> I was practicing with flexors. Um, I don't know if, if it was because my name was Brooklyn, like Brooklyn was as naturally drawn to me. But, and I was in Brooklyn a lot, so I was a lot around a lot of people from Brooklyn, which is where Flexing is from. So I was just naturally around Flexing more than Light Feet. And then, yeah, I was practicing Flexing. And then one day I was at a hip hop session at EHPG. They have like a Wednesday session every Wednesday, a hip hop session every Wednesday. And I went to the hip hop session and that's when I saw Light Feet for the first time. And I didn't understand that again, I didn't understand the style at first because I never saw it before. So I just saw this person that was dancing hip hop, but in a completely different format. Like it's hip hop, but it's not the hip hop that we know here in Europe. It's like, okay, this, what is this, you know? So I just went over to him and I was like, hey, what is that? <laughs> and he was like, this is Light Feet. And then from there on, he kind of like, introduced me to everything. He brought me to team night. He brought me to light feet battles. And then I started getting into the light feet culture. But I've been like in both. Yeah. Pretty Cause, much. Because it, yeah. it is a bit similar because in light feet you can also throw in a bunch of different styles, a mm -hmm. bunch of different moves. So I can really see how you both got very attracted to that. It's very mm -hmm. it feels very free, joyful, and it's more about mm -hmm. like entertaining people rather yeah. than Killing people that mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe more dance it's too where I come from. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, basically, that's another thing. Flexing is from dance hall. It's from mm -hmm. reggae. From it comes from that era, like that little era that mm -hmm. comes from there. Yeah, it's so two very different feels though. Mm -hmm. Yes, like that's what draw me more to the light feet side. I felt like it was more happier. Like I would go to a flexing event and I would go to a light feet event and light feet would just be like hype, like super hype and flexing it like, it's like super intense. Like people <laughs> come to kill. Like, it's like, I was like, oh, the first light feet event I was, I was like, this is, this is intense. No, the first flexing event. Yeah. It's like yeah. very different vibes. Because X, when we saw Emily starting to battle, like again, like 10 years ago, since then she had a smile most of the times in battle yeah. like i would say that emily you seem to be like you like to go into battle but you always keep a smile and it's mm -hmm. yeah i mean you're a chameleon you've been doing like very very different things but mm -hmm. um I, I can definitely see why you tended to come into that so it's it's very cool um and um when you got into light feed and you like okay i love this culture um how how hard was it though because i don't know a lot now it's bigger in europe but i didn't know a lot about europeans going to new york for light feet and vice versa i didn't know about any events in europe in this culture um so, it wasn't any. <laughs> yeah how was yeah. it to to enter was it like a Oh, great that you're here come and join or was it like oh, no i actually am for real i want to learn this please let me in um yeah in the beginning it was very much like uh welcoming because a lot of tourists come from europe from japan from blah 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 and they come to expg they take life key classes they come to team night they and people are welcoming to begin with were for me, that's the experience I had. People were super welcoming, they wanted to teach me, they wanted to bring me around. Um, but then when the whole viral thing happened, that's when like stuff started to change for me in the light feet community. But before that, I was cool with everybody and everybody was cool with me. And it was like, no problems, people was teaching me. 
Um, yeah, because I was very, like you've seen me be my whole life, very hungry, like very willing to learn, very much around like people. And um, so in the beginning, yeah, it was welcoming. I feel like. And then it is a little bit similar with like the whacking. You have practiced the whacking for a couple of months. You get pushed into a battle yeah. and like, you, you know, you and this school teacher viral video was also a couple of months, right? Into your journey into Lightfeet or was it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I started, like I said, I found out about Lightfeet five years ago and then I started practicing here and there, but it was so hard because nobody in Denmark was doing it. So when I came back from New York, it was like, I can't really learn from, we didn't, we didn't, I don't know, five years ago, it wasn't so normal to like do Zoom classes and stuff like, like it is now. Like we really wasn't doing that five years ago. So like I would come back to Denmark and I would just be like alone, like practicing cheat tricks or whatever. And people thought it was weird because they never saw it before, right? I was the first one in Denmark doing it. So people didn't understand the style at first. And when you're the only one doing a style and people don't understand it, it's hard to keep the motivation for it when you're the only one trying to push for something all the time, you know? So it kind of died down every time I went back to Denmark, I kind of just went into regular European hip hop again because it was like, okay, how am I gonna dibble and dabble this? And then when was this, two years ago? Four years ago? I'm confused now. Four years ago, I then went for two months for a whole summer with my sister. And that's when I really like started getting into light feet. Like I really started, I went there purely to learn light feet. I was like, okay, I take these two months just to laugh my ass off. So I went for two months and then three days in, I injured my leg in a battle. And I was like, fuck. I just like raised money to go these two months and practice light feet. And now I injured my leg. So that's how I got into Harlem shaking because I couldn't move my legs. And I would go to these light feet sessions and I saw Harlem shakers for the first time. And I was like, mm, that's lit, I like that. So then I just started Harlem shaking and then literally that high school where people thought I was a school teacher <laughs> that went viral, I was injured there. Like that's why I'm only Harlem shaking because I was literally injured in my knee. I couldn't really dance. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to go in that cipher at all. I was at a battle. And then at the end of the battle, they was like, all oh, girl cipher, all oh, girl cipher. And I was like, I'm not going, I'm not going. And then somebody pushed me in. <laughs> and that's when I did that solo. And then it just went viral. Like two months after I started really laughing. So it was like, yeah, like the whacking thing, I just got into it and then it just took off after like two, three months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was crazy. So so X, like when did when did you start to get into the battling of your style? Like you, you said it was harder to get, you know, to get into the first practice session. And it took you seven months to even start the style. Uh, how long did it take you to go into a battle for the first time? And how was that experience? Okay, oh, wow. That was so many years ago. Um, I wanna make sure I'm correct. Okay, um, when I first started, I didn't battle, I, I waited till I got to the point where I was comfortable with myself and like I can see myself on screen. Like in my head, I had to vision it. Like I had to see myself doing good before I thought about even battling anybody or being recorded. Like, right? so I used to always go live with my friends, go home, grab my camera, put it in the bathroom and I actually just practice and watch myself all the time. All the time, I was I did I did that so much, so much, to the point where I had got comfortable with it. So um, I started around 2006, and I went into battling 2009. So it took me like a good three years to get comfortable with myself and actually get everything that I want, all the attributes I wanted, to go out and battle people. So. Um, and when I did do that, 
I did a couple of sessions. That's little like events where they had little dance sessions. I had did a couple of those, and then after that, I did Battle Fest, and like I won those dance sessions, and then I did Battle Fest on a big stage and did horrible because I was nervous. <laughs> of so, yeah, so um, that happened, and then I and I was like, okay. I will never go through that again, <laughs> never again. So from there, that pushed me to like know exactly how I want to be more than what I thought I wanted to be. Like, so yeah, from there, I just became the best me I could be. Like, and it just kept elevating from there. Yeah, it was funny to dig through some YouTube clips on you. I found some really, <laughs> like the pixels are like lower and lower the more you go back so i, yes. I can really tell that you've been <laughs> doing this for a long time 2009 that's that's over 10 years ago yeah wow what yeah. like is there an age difference between you two are you uh, yeah i'm um, yeah. what two years older three years older three. Than I'm. yeah i'm, I'm still young. Baby. yeah it's enough then. <laughs> <laughs> two years, really. no it's three okay <laughs> Um, so, yeah, it's, it's funny because uh, this is a, this is probably a funny misconception as well. The, all the first times I've seen bone breaking, there were always two versus two because of helping each other in like helping bone breaking each other. So I thought that this was like a style where you necessarily had to be too battling. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> you know. I, I'm blaming on the Europeans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because the first time I saw bone breaking, it also was two people. Yeah, Who was Bones it? and Aaron. Oh wow! Okay. That was the first time I saw bone breaking on Yak Films, and they were two. So I thought like it was duet type of style. <laughs> yeah, because like you can only yeah. hold so much behind your head. Was my thought. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe yeah. you need help to create shapes. I don't know, but was yeah. was um when you started the balling then x were you already in a crew or like how did that dynamic look for you were you a solo dancer um, and became in the crew or the other way around well yeah when i first came, when i when i first started i was in a little group and then we wound up breaking off and then i went to my cousin group that's when i started battling so before my cousin group i was just with my friends that learning getting a little ins and outs on how things go like and then we all just broke off into flex groups like the big flex groups like a couple of them went over there i went to my cousin and a couple of them went to the other side so yeah that's how that went kind of and then from there it's just been battling 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 battling, battling. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Not before we go back into this episode i want to take the time to shout out this episode's sponsors be Fit and Sensual. I have been working with Be Fit and Sensual's Dancers Bootcamp online program for a while now, and I know from firsthand experience that it works. So, what is Be Fit and Sensual except worldwide coaching individually one by one? Well, it's also Dancers Bootcamp online. Now, listen up to this. Dancers Bootcamp Online is the number one world platform for us dancers who want to train dance specific with easy follow along videos. Not only do you have tons of workout videos inside Dancers Bootcamp Online, but you also become a part of this global movement and community with like-minded dancers whose goal is to become better each and every day. Not only do you have weekly updated schedules, for the ones who want help to build their own workout routine. You also have two full 30-day challenges with dance-specific workouts only. Then you have different sections focused on different parts of the body. Let me tell you some examples. You have the abdominal section, bachata booty section, nutrition guidance, dancer's mastermind if you really want to get in to master your own mind and also stretching for dancers flexibility knee rehab for dancers and kettlebell flow for dancers on top of all of this you also have weekly webinars and live workouts with coach sebastian and you get a free coaching call with the team whenever you feel like you need it listen i would never promote this if i hadn't tried it myself 
I tell you, throughout Corona, this has been a life savior for me as a dancer when I couldn't go to classes or anything else. And I truly support the dance specific training that Sebastian and the team of BeFit Essential are doing. So if this sounds good to you, it's getting even better because we have our own promo code. When you are writing in a live story in one word, A-L-I-V-E story in one word, you now get 25% discount on the monthly membership as long as you stay. You can cancel whenever you want and there's no startup fee or hidden costs. So if you have any other questions about training or nutrition, never hesitate to reach out to Sebastian at his social media for personal guidance. Bye dancers! Four dancers. Yeah. Were there a certain points where you felt like, oh, I can maybe make a career and a living out of this? Was there like a certain point? I um I started looking at it that way about five years ago. Cause at first it was just a hobby for me. I just liked the rush of battling somebody and showing them they're not better than me. Like that was it for me until I had got booked to, um, to I had to um, perform for the US Open. So in 2011, no, more than five years ago, actually. Yeah, that's more than five Way more than five, now, now I'm thinking about it, yeah, way more than five years ago. So in 2011, I noticed a little something that, oh, okay, I can get little jobs from it, but I can make some money from doing this. But I wasn't looking at it as a career around that time, though. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, but yeah, I did, uh, I can say, London made me, when I had, when I got booked with my cousin, our I, I whole team, we went to London to do a um, breaking convention. From there, I was like, okay, this could be something big. Mm -hmm. We could continue to do this years on, years on. And we did a lot from there. Mm -hmm. Now we thought it would bring me right here, but, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's funny because I, 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 do, I do think that there is like a certain point. Now, Emily, you started so early and it's just kind of always been dancing for you. Yeah. But at some point, you also had to a million times question yourself, like, can I make a living out of this? Mm -hmm. You know, will I be booked enough on my workshops and all of mm -hmm. this? Um, did, you, did you plan on like, okay, I'm going to move to New York and this is how I'm going to make a living of it? Or was it more like, I'm going to learn as much as possible and bring it back to Denmark and make a career out of it? Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good question. I mean, I've always wanted to live in New York. It's been like a dream of mine since I was a kid because I always went there with my family and I always felt comfortable there. Like I always felt like a draw to New York. I always felt here, anybody can just be themselves and there's no judgment. Everybody can be, you can be as crazy as you want. You can look how you want, you can dance how you want. I just love the freedom that there is in New York. So I was always very drawn to there. So I always knew one day my dream is to live in New York and dance. And then I started going more and more to New York and then the viral thing happened. And then I was like, okay. I can actually make a living of this in New York. I'm getting everyday emails and DMs about bookings in New York and I'm not getting anything in Denmark. So that's like a sign, it's time for me to go. <laughs> so then I applied to get an artist visa and then I moved there like two years ago. And um, it's just been, those two years were good. Like it was really good, it was a lot of gigs a lot going on, like working with different labels and music videos and choreographing videos. And it's been, a, it's been really great the last two years. Yeah. Probably the best two years of my career, honestly. But also yeah. because it was like a dream come true for me to live in New York and be able to dance. And like, I don't know, I always picture myself as like dancing in rap videos. I always had that vision, like, I'm gonna be the first white girl to dance and rap videos in New York. That was always like, cause ever since I saw the little white girl in the Missy video, mm -hmm. I was like, that should have been me. Why is that not me? <laughs> so I always kind of knew like what I wanted to do and then things just started falling into place. All of these rappers started reaching out to me, wanted me to be in their videos, wanted me to choreograph their videos. 
And then, yeah, one thing just took another and all of a sudden I was just in situations where I was like, wow, this is literally what I've always dreamed of and now I'm here. Like, so it was, it's been pretty crazy, yeah. And you did that without being signed to an agency? Because most of the times, you know, dancers from Europe have to be signed to an agency in order to get bookings and, and gigs. No agency, no nothing, everything done. Um, strength of me. <laughs> Light feet, man, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah I okay. hit the jackpot with that one. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was crazy. All right. Well, <laughs> now we we we're kind of have to fuse these stories together now and i wonder oh, ex where like did you <laughs> see this viral video first or did you actually see emily before that i saw the viral video i i, I saw it and i was like wow <laughs> got a whole white girl killing <laughs> this Harlem shape like there's no tomorrow like yeah i did see that <laughs> oh, so funny Oh, you must. I, I, I was like, yo, she's doing it better than half of these girls that's actually doing it. It was crazy when I first saw it, but I didn't know her at all. Yeah. Never met her, nothing. I did not know. I just saw the video. I saw it a couple of times and just going down my Facebook news feed because I wasn't an Instagram person around the time. I was just Facebook and I just see her. And then I see another video go by. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's killing it. Okay. <laughs> but that was that's early it. on, though. That was the that's cool. school teacher video. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw you again. And the Marcy video. Marcy. Yeah, no. No, we were talking about Yeah, that. no, I'm talking about I saw you uh you when it was you and um you and boy you had the North Faces on. I was dancing outside. Not North Asian? No. What's his name? I don't know. He's lifey too. Oh tweet. Tweet. Oh yes. we did the Yak Films video. I okay. saw that video and I was oh, like, okay. okay, she's still killing it. Oh, okay, <laughs> that one. Okay. Yes. And then from, yeah, yeah, that was about it, really. Um, after that, it was, it was just normal for me. It was just a regular video watching. I was just watching another video, like. Mm -hmm. And what, and, and, and like, did you start talking online first? Or was it like uh, when you, you actually bumped into each other? That's her, that's what her answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you, who stalked who? Like, what, what was going on here? I <laughs> <laughs> no, so I saw a video of X for the first time like four years ago. I saw, yeah, I saw a video of him and I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta find him. And then I found him on Facebook. And then, uh, yeah, we was just like, I, it was not the time at that time. I so was, then, yeah, he was in a relationship, and I could see that he was in a relationship. So I was like, okay, I'll wait. They're going to break up. I'll wait. So then <laughs> I was waiting oh, patiently. <laughs> I was patiently waiting for like two years. It wasn't really that long. Wow, yeah, I think I it was. Know. It was like <laughs> at least like a year and a half where we, like we were friends on Facebook, but we never met. Like nothing. I just added him on Facebook, but we really never talked. We didn't, never met nothing. And then one day I just wrote him out of nowhere, like two and a half years ago. I just wrote him. You commented under my video. No, I sent him a clip of his video. He did World of Dance, uh -huh. where you won. Yeah. And I was watch. I was actually watching the battle, and I was like, no, this is too nice. I gotta let him know that this is too nice. So I took a video of me like watching his battle. I sent it to him, and I was like, you killed this. And he was like, oh shit, thank you. You're killing it too. <laughs> The and then teacher sliding into my DM. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. I already knew she wasn't a school teacher. Yeah. I knew she wasn't yeah. a school teacher. Everybody thought that though, but yeah, you didn't. I knew you wasn't a school teacher. I'm like, <laughs> she's too young to be a school teacher <laughs> in New York. Uh uh. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it's like a school teacher Harlem shaking. Like, it's not really that realistic. But it's like, the meme worked. <laughs> it definitely did. No, but yeah. then, yeah, then I wrote him, and then we, st in the first, we was just talking about dancing, honestly, because I was like, I really wanted to get into bow breaking at the time. And I wanted to learn. And he wanted to learn life feet. Again. So he was like, oh, okay, when I get back to New York, we can, like, laugh. I can teach you some life feet. You can teach me some bone breaking. He was talking about making videos and stuff. Like, we were sending each other music. Like, it was very much, like, dance-related to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to New York, and then we started talking. 
So the whole time I've lived in New York, we've been together. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it must. Wow. Wow. <laughs> no, but it's funny because uh, like I always, always heard you in your videos. Like I knew from the first time I saw him that that's him, this is it. that's it, uh -huh. this is the, this, you know, this is the guy, uh, but, but yeah, because of videos online and stuff, I always, I was like, but how did that actually, you know, right, who, who was the stalker of one of them, <laughs> cool, <laughs> well, you can live on that, she's yours now, you know, right, hey, at this point, it doesn't matter who stalked you, stalked me, I'm a boat, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but that's lovely. You guys, uh, you guys met. You've been together for over two years. Uh, have you been able to, you know, like keep on inspiring each other, or are you very much like this is my lane and this is your lane, and we support each other, but it's two it different is. parallel paths? I, I can say it's both mm -hmm. because it comes to a point where um, we inspire each other, and then it comes to a point where okay, this is what I do. I know exactly how this goes, and this is what you do, and you know exactly how that goes. Mm. So it's like, it, yeah, it's both. I can say it's both. How do you feel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel the same way. I mean, it's been times where we've been more separated with our stuff. Like, you've been doing you, and I've been doing me. And then it's been times when we've been doing more stuff together. Mm -hmm. Like, we used to dance on the trains together. So like mm. we used to wake up every morning, go and dance on the trains all day, and make money together. Mm -hmm. So we did that for quite a while. Like, that yeah, that's how. Like that's when we first started dating. We was doing that. So we were very much together then, like laughing a lot yeah. every day, and dancing on the train, and all of that stuff, making videos, and yada yada yada. And then, yeah you had your then his his netflix movie came and then it just i started making music and like then it was like a lot of lanes that just didn't really go together mm -hmm. so then he was really doing your thing and i'll do my thing mm -hmm. and then i feel like now they're getting more back together kind of thing like now the stuff we're planning for in the future is more together so yeah I feel like it's, it's both. It, yeah, it's in and out. Like mm -hmm. sometimes we were very doing everything together, and sometimes it's like, all right, you got to do what you got to do, and I got to do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, because it, it could be a challenge, you know, like when you are a dancing couple and both of you have mm -hmm. your careers to not start competing and not start comparing and all of that. So I'm, I'm happy to mm -hmm. also hear that you're like doing both because I think it's mm -hmm. like just a personal view, like I think it's very healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. to just you know otherwise you're just gonna be in constant either like yeah, bumping yeah. Or yeah. Compared all the time yeah. um but yeah um emily you mentioned that you one day wanted to create an event is this something that you're seeing yourself doing together uh like a professional big battle or something i mean i honestly i see us doing a lot of things together I feel like this is just like now we're just like building a foundation to like do a lot of stuff like we've been talking about a bunch of things day in schools events I want us to do like workshops together I want us to like make a theater show we can sell to different theaters and travel around and do shows together yeah. like I see us doing a lot of things together so I feel like right now we're in a space where it's like I just build the foundation. Yeah, it's not much I can do right now. I'm kind of this <laughs> in a waiting position. <laughs> but, uh, but like, I feel like once I've given birth, and then we can really start like digging into. Also, because people don't understand our situation is not like we just live together, and you know, right now we live in two different countries, and we're having a child, and. It's a lot going on. We're trying to figure out where are we going to be full time? Is it going to be Denmark? Is it going to be New York? What's going to make most sense for us both career wise, but also having a kid? What's like right now is a lot of figuring oh, out. <laughs> yeah, right now it's a lot of like figuring out yeah. what's the future going to be like for us. So I feel like once we are a little bit more stabilized, that's when we can really start like digging into stuff together. Um, 
again, like we did when I, when I lived in New York and we was together all the time. That's when we could really be creative all the time together, talk ideas, do this, this, that. But when we're apart and then we're together for one month, like it's not always dancing. You think about when yeah. you haven't seen each other for six months and then you're finally together. It's like, fuck that. Now we just want to be together, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I, think, I feel like I once think... stuff slows down a little bit and gets back to... Well, it's not going to be normal because we're going to have a job, but once it's like <laughs> we're, we're together full time again, then yeah. we can really start getting into our creative bag together like it was. That's how I feel like. <laughs> no, but it, that's also a misconception, eh? Like my boyfriend is also a dancer. Think, people think that the only thing we're doing is dancing. Like, oh, it must be so good for you in Corona because you yeah. must be dancing all the time. And I'm like, bruh. That's the that's the last thing I'm thinking about. Being home with him 24/7, it's like oh, we do like a little kiss on by the kitchen from time to time, and and then but yeah. it's like we're not doing anything until it's like basically work. Yeah. Um. So yeah. yeah, I think that that's a huge misconception about dancing couples being at home together. Yeah, I feel like we get that a lot. Like especially during this pandemic. Yeah, or like whenever we get together, be like, when you guys dropping a video, when you guys do this, when you guys do this, and it's like Relax. we want to do it, but it's also like I'm pregnant. We haven't seen each other for three months. We're getting married. Like it's a bunch of real life shit that's going on. You know what I mean? It's not always we can just be oh this is a dance video like <laughs> if we're not getting paid for it it's honestly the last thing on our minds right now it's so much else real life stuff that's going on so it's like yeah, yeah. it is a misconception that it's like oh, okay just because both of you are dancers you guys are just laughing 24 7 in the house together like no we do laugh but it's like we're also just in a regular relationship <laughs> you know what i mean like i hope that's <laughs> You just laughing 24-7? Oh, my Lord. I hope that's not happening. <laughs> I really hope. No, but no, no. I think that's very much like when it's new. Like, we were that very much in the beginning. Yeah, it was laughing all the time and doing videos all the time. And, but also, we had the time. Yeah. What else were we doing? Like, we were just dancing and together. So it's like, might as well just dance together. And now, with all the real-life stuff that's going on, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. But well, we didn't forget to be a couple and go out to eat and go to no, a yeah, movie yeah. or something like actually be normal, a couple like yeah, yeah. So I just hope everybody is doing that. Is doing that and not just thinking about <laughs> dancing. Like, yeah, yeah. We do have a real life. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Like me and me and my boyfriend, we've been together for eight years. You know, like after being in the same crew you know full-time work teaching training yeah. when the dance school are closed until midnight mm -hmm. and then touring in the in the weekends with our crew we were like oh. crewmates mm -hmm. uh, 85 percent of the time and then we were like boyfriend girlfriend like when we're both dead trying to make food for the next <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we moved to amsterdam and the suddenly we not with none of us had full-time works and i saw him after for the first time being together after five six years i saw him on a friday evening taking a glass of wine and the only plan was to eat lasagna and i was yeah. like oh my gosh who are you and what are we and what is this and Friday night no plans oh my gosh <laughs> the so, moment you've been waiting for <laughs> yes like a yeah. normal couple check you know yes yeah. it's really and nice that's the real beauty behind it though, yeah that y'all can actually work together and then still put that to the side and remember exactly who y'all are and why y'all together like mm. And it's gonna be periods like also for you guys you know like you gonna have periods where you don't dance at all and then it's gonna come like yeah now we're creating a theater piece so mm -hmm. you know this half of year we're gonna see each other in a workspace mm -hmm. also yeah. in so mm -hmm. enjoy that time you know mm -hmm. 2020 everyone check it out anyway please don't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true oh but emily i also wanted to to ask you about talking my shit <laughs> song when did this happen <laughs> when did this happen when did you start like being interested in doing songs or like is this what what happened there what happened there 
I mean, I've always wanted to do music. I've always been right. I've always like been writing stuff and like, I don't know, I've always been wanting to do music. And then I came to New York and it's like very strange. <laughs> it's like very strange in America with like this followings on Instagram and stuff. Like people put you on this pedestal, like you're a celebrity and it wasn't like that in Denmark or like in Europe. People couldn't care less. But in New York, it was like, he can tell you, people will stop me on the street to like take pictures with me. And like, it was weird. Like, it was very strange for me to experience that. It was like, okay, wow, people see me as like something and I'm just like a regular dancer or whatever. So I think like, I kind of like got bitten by that. I was around these celebrities all the time. I was around these record labels. I have good connections with Def Jam, Universal. Like I was in these houses with these executives that own Def Jams and they were like, we want to work with you and linking me up with other artists and telling me to work with their artists. And so I was around that culture. I was around the music and then I was like, why don't I just try it? Like, I really want to do music. I've always wanted to do it. And I'm getting paid to promote all these other artists' music. So why not just make my own music and like dance to my own music? Yeah. And then um, also because whenever I would go somewhere, people always thought I was an artist. People always like, oh, what type of music do you do? And I'd be like, um, I'm just a dancer. And it started getting to the point where I'm like, fuck it, why don't I just make music? <laughs> So I got into a, a situation, it was really random actually, I just linked up with a producer that uh, used to dance light feet, but now he's like a big producer in New York. We just started connecting, well first we was connecting over light feet obviously, and then we started connecting because of music. We started going to the studio together, little after that I got signed to his manager. Um, and then a few months later I was supposed to go on tour all over us warming up for Fetty Wap with like my own music and my own choreography for like two months and then that got canceled because of corona and then i went to denmark <laughs> and then it's like we just had this talk yesterday about the industry here versus the industry in america mm -hmm. and it's so different i can't really do what i do in new york here in denmark it's not the same thing at all so, and I really don't have a big interest in doing music in Denmark right now. I want to do music in New York, but I don't know about doing music in Denmark. So right now the music thing is like, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I want to do music, but at the same time, I don't want to do it here. And yeah, so I don't know. I'll see what happens. Yeah, it was, a, it was fun while it lasted. I really enjoyed it though. It was really fun. I, I had kind of, yeah, something, my passion for dance kind of died down for a minute. Like it was like, I couldn't really find the joy in dancing anymore. And when I found making music, I found that joy again. I found like, oh, when I knew I go to the studio tonight, I got butterflies in my stomach. I was excited. I could be in the studio from nine to six in the morning and love it and like be excited to learn new stuff and try new things and beats and rhythms and flows and all of these type of things. I got the same excitement making music that I got dancing. So I think that's why I was drawn to it because I had kind of lost my passion for dance. So feeling it again was like really nice. But then Corona happens. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, so, I think it's I think it's very interesting because most of the times when dancers turns into music, what I mm -hmm. love is that they always bring the dancers, you know, to yes. a bigger platform of like dance dancers who becomes musicians are usually the ones who have the most dancers in the background of their videos and can give like yeah. pushing other local dancers forward. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you know. I, I really hope that you can continue doing that in the future as well. Maybe there is a combination going on here as well. We don't know yet. Maybe X is going to be involved somehow. X yeah, will be <laughs> uh, My best friend Sean pushed me towards it, but I don't know. It's Maybe we're going to start doing music. Who knows? <laughs> it's not my thing. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's fun. I thought it was really just fun. I really didn't think about like, oh, I have to get to certain places with it. I just thought it was really fun. I enjoyed doing it. Yeah. Yeah. X, what is like your vision now? Because I, I also want to kind of get the vision of where you both are going. But what is your, what is some of your dreams with your dancing, with your art, with your, you know? Um, right now, I see two things. Um, I see, I see one of my biggest goals is to have a dance school. It's one of my biggest goals. And one of my newest goals is to, uh, do more stunt, stuntman things. I, th I think that was pretty cool. I really liked that. I really, the whole progress, the process of doing it, it was very different and I enjoyed it a lot. So I would really want to attack that and have my own little stunt team, contortion and stunt team, because there's no contortion stunt team at all, like period. So I would love to attack that more. Other than that, everything she said about us going on tour with theaters and doing workshops together, that's what I see in the future mm -hmm. as of right now. Mm. Nice. Nice. I'm super excited for you both. Like, you know, you're both so young. You do, you have so many years to come. And, and, and even though you're creating a family right now, you just you have all these opportunities that can just, you know, be grabbed in both countries. I don't think that, mm. that one should, you know, close the other door. It's, mm. it's, you are two people from two different countries and this is your journey. And so it will contain both, no matter how mm. for sure. For That's sure. how I feel. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So in the end of my interviews, I always love to do something called fill in the blanks. It's basically, I start a sentence and I will ask one of you to end my sentence of what you feel. No judgment, just your own opinion. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? <laughs> <should be> <laughs> All, right. All right. No, don't start with me. Start with whoever you feel. <laughs> All right. So I will start with X. I will start with X then. When I first came to Denmark, one of the biggest things I discovered was peace. Peace. Welcome to Scandinavia, man. <laughs> <I'm sorry. Yeah. laughs> For real. <laughs> uh, okay, M. When I left New York last time, I knew that I was going to. Why would you went first? <laughs> I knew I was going to miss New York. <laughs> <laughs> that you were going to come back. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. All right, X. I'm going. I'm going a little bit deeper now. What is one of the biggest fears you ever overcome? Biggest fears. I'm not a fearful person. Um, mm. I know, I know. We're hitting you hard now. It's okay. Yeah. One of my biggest fears that I'm that I've overcome that re re, re say it again, Sonia. One of the biggest fears I have ever overcome was Hmm. That's really hard for me. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. I'm not you know, a person that I don't know. Uh. Yeah, we're both not like really fearful people. Yeah, I'm not a fearful person. Like I, I don't know. I just go right into it. Like I'd be a little nervous, but fear. Like I don't. Uh. Okay, I rephrased the question. Boom. What, having what a kid. Is, huh? I'm having a having kid. Having a kid at an early age. Boom. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. But 
but overcoming fear is growth so there you go you know that's mm. it that's it okay yeah. emily what is a quality in someone else's life that you always want to live by that i want to live by hmm there's a few but the first one would be being yourself as corny as it sounds but like that's what i live by i'm very big on being authentic to who you are and not caring what other people think about it that's like a big thing of mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good spin on that x when are you the most authentic self When I'm my most authentic self. When I'm in creative mode, when I'm ready to create, that's when I'm myself completely. I have no worries. I don't have to think about, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Being myself, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't got to think about everybody else or what people think. I just know this is what I want. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do beautiful answer yeah that's why you're an artist probably as well so okay emily what is an old pattern or mindset that you have left behind because it didn't serve you being fearful of love mm. yeah but that's real he will tell you that i was i've been scared for a long time to really love like for real and not like be scared of it. So that's like a pattern I'm living in the past because it doesn't serve me. Mm. So I left that. Yeah. Wow. And now you're married. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. Um ooh, I, I I'm I'm like testing my waters how how yeah. <laughs> okay, X, what is a person that you are the most grateful for, except your wife now then? Person I'm most grateful for? My sister, Tamika, yeah. Mm -hmm. She helped me with a lot. She pushed me to go, she pushed me to do a lot. She helped me get through a lot. She was always there for me, so I'm very grateful for her. We love, love bombing, sister. Love bombing. Yes. yes. Okay, M. Um, what is one moment that you're most proud of in your life so far? One moment? It's hard. Oh, Lord. Um, I was very, the moment I got my approval for my artist visa was like a very big moment for me because that was like a whole year of hard work to get that visa and it was a shitty year and i knew like okay i'm doing i'm going through all of this spending all this money all this energy on getting something so i can go and like chase my dream so when i got that visa it was like a defining moment for me it was like wow okay even though it this really shows how much I want what I'm doing, you know, the dedication I, I did to have that visa really shows how hard I, I want, how much I want this. Like, yeah. 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 I think that this is just a sidetrack. I think that this is a, a, also a big misconception that a lot of maybe Americans don't understand about like mm -hmm. European dancers coming that mm -hmm. it is like a very fine line from like here mm -hmm. they are coming and taking advantage of our culture and do they really mm -hmm. want to get into the culture and mm -hmm. to contribute yeah. and then you have the the other side which is like you know the, the Europeans are like you don't understand how hard I fought <laughs> yeah. here yeah. so that I can learn from the source and not just learn from YouTube and share knowledge back home mm -hmm. from not the creator themselves so mm -hmm. this is my way of showing my respect and paying my my you mm -hmm. know so yeah. I think that this is a, a like a political landscape that is a bit mm -hmm. um, you know touchy so mm -hmm. yeah um, definitely okay X uh 
how do you perceive the word age? Age? Age. Honestly, I don't pay attention to it. I no, guess that's why I still look like I'm 16, 18 years old, because I do not pay attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't pay attention to that word. I don't, I, even on birthdays, even though people care for it, I really don't care for birthdays. Like my birthday. Other people's birthday, yeah, I'm happy for you. I'll buy you a gift for me. I don't care for my birthday. Mm -hmm. It's just another day. Yeah, I have to like force him to celebrate his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice. Now, well, I'm, I'm the same. I just turned 30 and now I'm like, yeah, we're over it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now it's, it's, it's not, what it is. It's I've not. been over birthday since 15, 16 years old. I've been over it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, M, uh, last question for, for you there. Uh, what is something that you heavily uh, once pursued that you no longer care for today? Hmm. Um, um, mm. Fame? Yeah. I didn't used to pursue that, but I got caught up in New York. <laughs> Everybody over there is chasing fame, so I just started chasing it too, like... You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like New York will really hype you up to like chase fame. It, and it then was. and then you're in the middle of like chasing it. And then I came home to Denmark and I'm like, I, I really don't even care for that. <laughs> like, why was I even chasing that? <laughs> yeah. So that's like definitely a thing I'm like not focused on pursuing anymore. Yeah. That must yeah. be a bit like I'm again, I don't know it's what you thought about, you know, when you came to Denmark and you, you found that peace or like you, you saw peace. Mm -hmm. Um did you also notice people's different mentality around fame and and that? Yeah. It kinda doesn't exist as much. I don't think people care for it as much and that's kinda a good thing. Like I think that's very peaceful <laughs> to mm -hmm. me. Yeah, because in New York, everybody is chasing everybody is chasing fame. fame. Even if they, like people that work in a corner store is chasing, chasing fame. fame. Like, Seriously, a deli people like everywhere you go, there's somebody thinking about going viral. Yeah, it's like relax, live your life. <laughs> yeah, I'm not chasing it. At it's all. a lot of that. Yeah. And I will yeah. round up by saying I do have seen your YouTube video or your YouTube channel. And I just want to say, ask you both, you know, like, what is your, what is your vision with that? What do you want people to know about you from that channel that maybe, maybe we don't know yet about M and X yet? I want people to realize I want people to realize that life is short. So actually just be there with the people you love and actually build and not always fight. Show the happy side of us. Show that it's so much. Show like unity. Because right now, it's a lot going on with racism. It's a lot going on with just the world, period, that like they just need to see interracial. Or like they need to see just people working together that's not even from the same country. Like That's how I'm looking at it, mm -hmm. in a way. What about you, baby? Yeah, the same thing. I've, we've had this talk so many times. Mm -hmm. We really just don't. We don't care for labels. We don't care for, yeah, like you said, with all the race thing that's going on in America right now, in the world right now, and like we don't really care for it. We don't want to dig into that and be like, oh well, 
you're from this culture and I'm from this culture, you look like this, I look like that, Why like, we love each other regardless of how we look or where we come from. And that's like the message we want to push in general. And I feel like we're kind of pushing that message without even having to say See, it. Yes. <laughs> because people, it's like you have to deal with it, whether you like it or not. Like you have to deal with us being here and being together and doing what we love. And and I think like people, um, they had a hard time with that in the beginning. Like we, we still, even now, we need a lot of people that have opinions about us or why we shouldn't be together or and stuff like that. And we just, we just, brush it off and, and continue to show like that's your problem it's not ours <laughs> you know it's not really they hate you now to love you later yeah yeah and yes. you gotta show by example you know mm -hmm. yes. this is and should have been for a long time the new normal we are mm. globalization like we are a global world we shouldn't have you know country borders but here we are and mm -hmm. you know you're gonna have a mixed race child and whatever you can mm -hmm. do right now and in the future to make that child feel as a world citizens as possible mm -hmm. you know what else are we doing here it is yeah. right. them. so yeah yeah the damn selves man yes yes <laughs> in I always, I, you know, first of all, thank you so much for taking your precious time to talk with me and hang out with me here on Zoom. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome. also, I, you know, I always leave the mic to my, to my interview guests. Uh, where can we find you? Uh, where can people, you know, check out your dope ass work? And is there anyone you want to love bomb? You know, this is the time the mic is yours. Um, <laughs> you can <see> us on <laughs> on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel called Brooklyn Days. Uh, it's been a little bit quiet because we've been in two different countries, <laughs> but uh, it's it's a lot of footage coming there. We want to share a lot about us personally, but also our dancing, our process behind the scenes, all of that. You can find us on our YouTube's. You can find X on Go Breaking. You go right, X. you can just write a Savior Days on Facebook, Instagram, and I will come up. And That's I'm it. Emily Brooklyn <laughs> underscore on Instagram. You can find <laughs> me there and uh, catch us in real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. but for real, have a great, you know, pregnancy. Uh, we're looking forward to also see your new chapter. Uh, and even though it's not for the online people, we do hope to maybe see, you know, your little miracle coming out in the world later on dancing as well. So yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and I wish you thank a great you. end of the year. Yeah, you too. Merry you Christmas. Too, <laughs> Don't forget to click subscribe, comment below, and give us a rating or review. We have a Facebook page, YouTube page, and we are on Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and all the other podcast platforms. We also have an Instagram, so don't forget to tag us in your favorite episode and share it with the world, because we read all of it.